What is up, people of the internet? Oh yeah, you guys out there in YouTube land, hoping to see some really good stuff and hear some really good gossip. Well, I've got some great stuff for you today, great gossip, um, and we're going to learn some really cool information. But before we get into that, first of all, welcome to the Daggum Circus. Take it from the top. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That's right, people. Why am I excited? Well, because these <laughs> these people are clowns. <laughs> Man, the girls that are scamming these guys, they are real clowns. And they belong in the circus. <laughs> what do I mean? Let me pause that. I mean this. This garbage right here, okay? My poor beloved friend from the military. God bless him. I hope he sees the light of day. It's okay, brother. When you see the light, come talk to me. We will have a full-on discussion. By the way, if there's anybody out there who would like to reach out to me and maybe have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, either by phone, by text, or even a Zoom call, if you need a meeting, a, count, a consultation, let me know. And yeah, just leave your socials down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, reach out. I love to talk to people. I love to interact with my viewers. Anyways, so this gentleman right here, my friend's name, we'll, we'll say his name is George, okay? As you can see, this is a photoshopped picture. This is not a real picture of a woman with a man, all right? This is a picture of husband and wife with a photoshopped cropping of my friend's face, uh, pasted to the, the groom, okay? This is how bad he loves this woman. He's posting her on his Facebook profile. She lives in the Philippines. He's never met her, all right? They've done some uh, Skype calls and video chatting and all that good stuff. He's sent her money, lots and lots of money. And oh my gosh, my friend, do not feel bad when you figure this out. Don't feel stupid, okay? We're gonna welcome you to the club, brother. We're going to give you a big hug and say, welcome. We've been waiting for you because, oh, yeah, we've all been there as men. And if you haven't yet, you will. Trust me, my friend, you will. <laughs> That's why we have places like strip clubs and OnlyFans and all this other stuff that guys are contributing to that, unfortunately, is actually hurting society. Anyways, um, so, yeah, my buddy here. I've been trying to reach out to him and encourage him because he's talking about being sad. And I'm like, dude, what's going on? Are you having problems with your girl? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you need to break it off of this this woman. He's like, why is everybody always trying to, you know, instruct me about this girl and tell me what to do? And it's like, dude, your friends and family see what's going on. She is using you. OK, and you're going to feel really bad when you figure it out. Because it's been ten months, it's been ten months already, and he still has not seen this woman in person, like flown to the Philippines or flew her out. She has kids by another man, okay, and he, the baby daddy, still comes around, still hangs out like a family, and it's like, woo, <laughs> bro, you're just paying for this whole family right now. So, and I'm sure she's thinking, thank you for the charity work. It's uh, it's greatly appreciated as she goes off into the sunset with her kids and her baby daddy. And I'm sure he's uh, uh, getting to know her right now. Anyways, so yeah, welcome to the circus. The internet is a wonderful place, people. But that's why I love being here because I love to give support. And today we are going to be looking at some more clowns. Although Kevin Samuels, he's not the clown, but this lady here who he's talking to, I can get a picture of her. Aha! Oh, anyway, you'll see her. There she is. Darn you, YouTube ads. Okay, let me turn this off. All right, so if you're a lady watching my channel for the first time or returning, welcome. It's a lovely place here on my beautiful channel, which has been around since 2014, and I have less than 100,000 views. Oh, yeah. Oh... Heck yeah, 614 subscribers, almost 200 videos, baby. This is probably one of the worst channels 
ever in existence, not because of the content, but because nobody listens to me. Nobody watches my content, but that's okay because it's not about the numbers. It's about the impact. So I hope to impact some people's lives today and we can all learn something. But anyways, check this lady out, man. She's got like a whole new camera stuff. Oh my gosh. This is the chick that I'm, I was telling you about with my friend who freaking thinks it's okay to scam people through love scams. And I told him, I said, dude, she could be living under your roof, sharing a bed with you, scamming you out of your money, and you have no idea. This is how complicated it gets, guys, because people misuse, misuse love to get what they want, which is likely your pocketbook. Yeah, she's like, oh, look at the camera he bought me. Isn't he so wonderful? Thank you, babe. <laughs> As she posts like half-naked photographs all over the daggum internet. I don't know if you could see that, but let's see if we can make this a little smaller. Oh, she's lovely, all right. <laughs> man, you're raising another man's seed, another man's legacy. What What are you thinking? I've been trying to talk to him, and he just won't listen, so... Hey, when the time comes, homeboy, come talk to me, all right? I will be waiting for you with, with open arms, and we can, yeah, listen to this music together. Take it from the top. Because these ladies are clowns out here playing these guys for fools. It's okay, guys. That's why we're here, to support one another and help you feel better, Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get right into this. Basically, this lady here is a Christian feminist, and I wanted to bring this up and bring this to your attention because this is a major problem in, in the church, okay? Um, women are trying to have their cake and eat it too, so to speak, and there's nothing wrong with that because I like cake, and I like to eat my cake. But the problem is... Um, we're experiencing a high volume of polygamy going on. All right, boss babes and all this stuff. And with the rise of TikTok, oh, yeah, it's going full-blown right now as we speak. But, yeah, so what's going on is like a, a paradigm shift of power. And, yeah, there's a lot of disrespect towards uh, the patriarchy, okay? And you hear, you hear ladies talk about the patriarchy. They're like, oh, the patriarchy's to blame. Oh, oppression of women. It's like, lady, shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about, okay? Guys who have beliefs like myself actually are big fans of women. We love you. We want to like see you guys do better. That's why we're here is because we're trying to address an issue that's a problem. And if you're intelligent enough to listen to what we have to say, you might learn something and you might improve your life because nobody's knocking like, polygamy and all that stuff, but we're knocking practices and behaviors that are not fair. We're saying, hey, play fair. Because when you don't play fair, you get victims. Like this guy right here, my friend, who's a clear victim and cannot see past the love that he's that he has for this woman he's never met before. And even though good well-meaning people like myself have tried to reach out to him and say, hey, dude, what are you doing? Okay, this is stupid. He's not going to listen because love is blind. People know this and they misuse it. It's called a love scam. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into this. We're going to be reviewing this little video by Mr. Kevin Samuels, who was found dead just a few days ago. Unfortunately, God rest his soul. He did a great work. Um... And, yeah, he was very controversial for simply having conversations with women. He would just sit them down and ask them questions. Why do you feel entitled to alimony type of stuff? Why do you think it's okay to use men? What, you know, let's talk about this. Let's have a civil conversation. And he did. And he was uh, found dead a few days ago. Um, so, yeah, you guys check it out. Do some research of your own and come to your own conclusions. And if you guys want to reach out to me for either a consultation, uh, if you want to pray with me or you need prayer, feel free to reach out to me. Leave your socials, leave your, your number, whatever, okay? And if you don't like what I have to say and you don't like this channel and you want to vent to me, hey, guess what? 
you can call into the to the show, okay? You can call into the show. We'll play a little music for you, okay? And we can have a nice discussion together about it and why you feel upset and offended because you're probably living in a fantasy. Okay, let's go, Mr. Kevin Samuels. I don't have all day, people. I have to get up early, okay? And I'm already 10 minutes in, and I probably won't review this entire video, but here we go. Confused as hell. And they're out here actively trying to date the same mean that you're dating. Hmm. My show is the first represents the first real time where women had to actually sit down and listen to the reality of what's going on. And I ask, what are you waiting for? Mr. Wright? Okay, so a little background information. So the lady he is talking to is about 43 years old and a quote unquote born again virgin. And it's like, lady, you are not a virgin, okay? <laughs> Stop fooling people. Stop fooling yourself. She even admits she had a sexual encounter back in 2016. Lady, you've been doing stuff since 2022, okay? And that's the year we're in right now. So don't try to lie. Just accept it. You're human like everybody else. You have sexual desire, okay? And the thing is, is the difference is when you're an actual Christian and you're a fake one, okay, an actual Christian just admits the fact that, hey, you know what? I'm not perfect. I do do stuff. And we're not gonna we're not gonna hide it. We're just gonna admit it and say I'm a sinner. And we need God's mercy. And that's the big that's the big difference of, of all. And uh, we need to love and respect each other with different genders. So here we go. Bring the heat, Mr. Samuels. Let's hear it, bro. I guess from a worldly perspective, yeah. Very well. Where, a world, but see, that's not what you're supposed to choose. You're supposed to just pick a suitable man. That's why I cannot go with you from this worldly perspective. You're a worldly Christian. That's why you I interrogate. So? I mean, you, you I've been know doing this me a long from time. a, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah, a short know conversation. You. I do know you. I certainly do know you. I got about eight broadcasts on Christian feminists. I do know you. Short haircut and all. Yep, I grew up with you. I grew up in the Bible Belt. I know what y'all look like, taste like, smell like, move like. I know everything about you. The biggest problem that he probably has with feminists like this is the fact that they're fake. They'll try to lie, you know. And who knows? Maybe she has been living the the moral upstanding Christian values for the past 20 years. I don't know. But nobody knows. That's just between her and the Lord. But chances are... She's human, and she's made mistakes like everybody else. You don't get to be this way, and it's God's plan. You've had to actively take yourself out of consideration. Whatever your reasons are, you still actively took yourself out of consideration. You do not prioritize relationship. Okay. But you, unlike many other women, have had more options. Six feet tall, model, height. Come on, ma'am. The point that he's getting at is that she's too beautiful to be single and still looking at 43. Because what about all those options for the past 20 years? You just curb them and don't even give them a chance? Um, and if you say you want to be married... Why are you single? Is And he's like, the problem's not the men. The problem is you. <laughs> You've been curbing the guys and being like, nope, he's not good enough. Well, what is good enough? In my opinion, I've heard it said before by some women that only Jesus is good enough and only he is worthy of these women. And I agree. He's perfect. He's God. He owns it all. He does deserve you. Let's continue. Ain't about God, and ain't nothing. Where is Mister Wright in the King James Bible? He's been overlooked. He's been left broken up with. Eighty percent, over eighty percent of all divorces initiated by one gender. 
And what does that tell me? That means they don't care about commitment. The new living verse. And why would you? If you have access to all the men that you could ever possibly want, and you have their full support at any age, 45, 55, you're probably not going to want to get married. You understand? Why? What, what benefit does marriage do for, for them? You have to think about that. The only thing that would benefit for would be companionship and financial stability. And to not be alone when you're older. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not bashing marriage. I'm just saying that that's how p some people look at it. They're like, well, what does it do for me? What do I benefit from this? Well, that's all. Where is, the Christ, where is Mr. Wright? Anywhere in the text. Anywhere. Old Testament, New Testament. Which, which chapter? Which verse? It's in Proverbs, Psalms? Matthew, Mark, what? What? Revelations? Are you talking about just like... Mr. Wright, this thing you're waiting for. Mr. Mr. Wright, Wright, where is he? Oh. Where is the text referring to? Wait for Mr. Wright. I'm not, I mean... When you sit down with your pastor and the people in church and interrogate what you believe about relationships, what do y'all talk about? When you go to singles ministry and say, I'm sitting 43 and single and I want to get married. What happens when you sit down with your pastor, the singles ministry or the women's ministry, and you talk about your beliefs and how they line up with what God wants when you're in your life and what's going on in the world in the church? What do they say? We actually don't. Well, I haven't been to any of those meetings with those conversations. Well, then why did, thank you. This is why I say I don't listen to women who proclaim Christianity because they don't move like Christians. You guys go back and look in any of my any of my videos when I listen to these Christian women say this and that. I ask the same question: Who's headship? Who's leadership? And you're moving on your own. You're not under your pastor. You're not under a ministry. You're not under anything. You're doing this on your own. And putting it off on our God. That ain't what he told us. Now is it? What do you okay? So there is no but I man. have I am planted in a church. I just uh-huh. So there there yeah, is you're truth planted in a church, saying, but if you're a, if you want Mr. Right or a Christian man, you're not in a church that facilitates marriage between singles. You're not asking your pastor, you're not I asked you who are who's in charge of this process? You Thank you. Because the point he's getting at is like, hey, who are you holding out for? Some guy who's six foot six, over six figures of income. All right, Mr. Perfect. Because even if Mr. Perfect did come along, guess what would happen? All right, they would get into the relationship and the relationship would grow cold because it's not built upon commitment. It's not built upon the old fashioned vows of, till death to us part. It's built upon their feelings. And oh, he keeps the seat up. Oh, he, uh, he doesn't brush his teeth every morning. I'm turned off. Well, if that's your thought process on love, why don't you go be with a woman? All right. Especially if you don't want the guy physically. Why don't you go be with your own gender? Because that's what it sounds like you ladies want. You don't want a man physically. And if you do, you want it in a polygamous, have my cake and eat it too sort of way. I want four boyfriends instead of one. And if I can't have the one guy who I set my sights on because he doesn't want to commit to me, well, psh, I'll just get a couple. And that's not how life really works. You can't do that. You understand? Because if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. And pretty soon, good men are going to wake up to this stuff and say, you know what? Maybe the Apostle Paul was right when he said, it's better to dwell as I, which is single or unmarried. That's why the Bible says, if she depart, let her, let her depart. So, Mr. Kevin Samuels is bringing up excellent points directed at the church, and boy, does it hurt sometimes, because it can kind of feel bad when you're getting kind of hit left and right 
you know, at the church. But guess what? Judgment begins at the house of God first. Guys, we got a problem to take care of that we're ignoring right now. And the church is turning a blind eye to this and saying, oh, you're divorced. You're a second class citizen. When instead you need to embrace them, pat them on the back and say, they're there, man. It's going to be okay. Have a male support system for all the single men who've been through this. Because guess what? A lot of churches are filled with a lot of women. But where are the men? I'll tell you where the men are. They're sitting at home crying themselves to sleep because they don't have their families. They don't have their kids. All right? The women are told, oh, it's okay. Just leave them. Hello, you took vows. You're married. What about the kids? Can't call them out because you're, you're labeled a bad guy. You're sexist. Oh, yeah, Value of Truth is a sexist, misogynist channel. No, it's not. Quite the opposite, actually. Continue, Mr. Samuels. And by the way, anybody out there who wants to point out the, the racial differences here, I want you to pay close attention to what this man has to actually say. It applies to both races. It applies to all races, matter of fact. Yeah. I'll upload the rest of it, guys. I have it on Zoom. Who's in charge of this process? I guess I'd have to say that I've been in charge of the process. Right. So, and that's why I said you're in charge of the process. So how can you be waiting for Mr. Wright and say you're, you're putting this off on born again virgin or whatever, when you're in charge of this, this is why I'm going to interrogate Sierra's prayer. This is going to, okay. So you guys didn't hear part of this. I'm going to upload this when I talk about Sierra's prayer in the standalone video, because this happens too often in our community. Well, women just sit around and oh, I'm going to be a born again virgin. Okay. But where's the, where's the husband that's supposed to come along with your virgin, your born again virgin status? Where's the, where's the relationship? Where's that at? Where's the yeah. relationship? Yeah. So in order for relationships to happen, you, we have to choose to make them happen. Uh, oftentimes when women do what you're doing, y'all do this out of fear. But do you feel safe? Um, safe by myself or like safe? Yeah, do you feel like, you're, do you feel secure in life? Alone work in retail. Yeah, if, if, if I really think about it, I am okay. Um, I do have family. I have family here. My godparents are here and I'm with them a lot. I'm with my sisters a lot. Um, yours, okay. Yours, okay. Your godparents, but when they transition on. Mm-hmm. You're safe because mankind has civilized the world and you have police, fire, and emergency. But are you secure in this world? Meaning, if you got ill, a life-threatening illness, do you feel secure then? Do you have good insurance? Yeah, I do. Good health insurance? I, I actually work for one of the top tech companies. So, I yeah, I do. You said retail. Mm -hmm. So you could survive a cancer diagnosis financially. Yes. I've been out of school for four or five Stop years. Stop it. My gosh. This is annoying when those commercials come up. All right. Continue. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, guys, I just wanted to kind of point this out. Notice he is having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with this lady, okay? And he's trying to dissect by asking questions. Hey, why are you single? Hey, do you feel safe? What's the problem? What do you want? All right, so if we're honest about what we really want as people, all right, number one, we want to feel not alone. We want to feel like people care, all right? And one thing that marriage provided was, well, you wouldn't be alone in life, okay? However, what people find often that often happens is when they get in a marriage, all right, it starts off hot, right? You met the woman of your dreams. Things were hot, man. And then as time went on and you guys lived together for a few years, things sort of slow down. You begin to question, is it me? Why, why does she not desire me anymore? I desire her. Well, it's hard to explain, but it's very common is all I can tell you. It's very common that the love dies in those marriages or not that it dies, but that it's redirected. So sometimes they don't have that desire anymore and you end up becoming roommates which is fine, but like I've told my girlfriend before in the past, if you just talk to me and we have open communication, we can pretty much get through anything in life. We just need to have an understanding. If you're not communicating, well, don't expect the guy to read your mind. And what's going on in our society today is unfortunately, men are bend bending over backwards for no good reason. And this is a problem from the, from the very beginning, okay? Now, I'm going to read to you a passage from Genesis chapter 3. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord, had, the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And notice this little part of this scripture verse. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Notice the first, one of the first actions that happened was that Eve gave the fruit to her husband. Now, when God judged the man and woman, notice what he said to Adam. He said, uh, where is it? Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife. See, what happened was, back then, instead of Adam listening to the voice of God and saying, you know what, sweetheart, this is wrong. I'm going to stand my ground on this decision. We're not doing this. He says, you know what, dang, I'm, not, I'm, I'm probably not going to get any tonight, especially if I go against her good, her good wishes. I'm not going to get lucky with my wife. Right? And what does he do? He compromises. So, little does Adam know that he brings into the world a world of despair, a world of sin, because of this one act of hearkening to the wrong voice. See, the problem with feminism is, well, you know, men are, are simping and listening to the wrong voice of empowerment. All right? And it's not that Women are the bad guys. They're just misled. It's not your fault, all right? It's just the fact that, hey, <laughs> you, you really didn't know any better, and that's okay. But, guys, you got to stand up to this. So when you put your foot down and say, you know what? Okay, you're going to withhold sex. Big deal. Okay, you're going to take me to divorce court. Okay, big deal. You have to be prepared and count the cost when those days come. And say, I'm not going to put up with this. Because that's the problem. When you put up with trash, garbage, right? 
you have problems. Remember, it's better to dwell in the wilderness than with an angry and contentious woman. So if she wants to leave, let her. Go ahead. You can't threaten me with peace in the house. So what's going on here is he's bringing to light, Mr. Samuels is bringing to light a major problem in the church that we have this feminist stuff in the church where we're just going to ignore accountability. We're going to ignore vows. We're going to ignore this major problem. And we're not going to hold them accountable. You know why? Because it'll hurt our pockets. And I understand that. Like when you are running a business, you want to cater to your your most loyal customers, right? Because why? They pay your bills. I understand that. However, there comes a point in time where we have to decide, is the money worth it? We need to stand on our moral convictions. Hey, ladies, I've noticed you guys are at an alarming rate leaving your husbands. Could you please explain why? Oh, well, he did this. Okay, that's forgivable, but he cheated. Okay, would he forgive you if you cheated? Well, yeah. Well, why would you not forgive him? What's the difference? This is what we teach in churches, forgiveness, right? Forgive one another. You want God to forgive you? You should forgive. It's very simple. Take your vows seriously. Be committed. Don't cheat on one another. All right? I, I feel like in the manosphere, there's a real problem with men saying it's okay for men to have multiple wives. It's not okay. As a matter of fact, it was forbidden in Scripture. Neither shall he multiply wives. It says, neither shall he multiply wives for himself. Deuteronomy chapter 17. I think that's very clear. And the reason is, the wives will turn away your heart from after God. So guess what? Polygamy is not allowed, man. You get one woman and you're done. That's why, you know, going from girl to girl to girl or from guy to guy to guy is actually unhealthy. So try to find one and make it work. The point is play fair. When you don't play fair, nobody wins. I believe you. We have great benefits. Mm -hmm. You don't or you do? I just say I believe you. Do, you. do you own your own home? I don't. Are you in an apartment? I am in a house. I am uh, renting. Mm -hmm. Do you know what your medical deductible is? Like for the year or like every time I go to the doctor? I don't go to the doctor. I mean, I'm, 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 well, I'm very healthy. I'm a cancer healthy. survivor, ma'am. I'm um, a cancer survivor and I'm... I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I just don't know. I work retail. I just don't know many retail people who have great medical benefits. I'm sorry. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I just don't uh, know. Many. The company provides a lot of resources. $500,000 so, yeah. worth of $500,000 medical bill. Major surgery, chemotherapy. No, ma'am. Not retail. No. Well, well, okay. So I don't know about that, but I know. I what know. I That's what I'm have saying. needed. My, my point is you don't know and you have to because you have what I would consider to be false security. Your godparents, they're older than you. Your sisters, are your sisters married? Do they have kids? Um, My little brother just got married. Uh, no. <laughs> I am actually the oldest. Uh huh. So, are you earning more than six um, I'm sorry. Are you earning more than a hundred thousand dollars annually? No. Seventy thousand. No. Fifty thousand. Yes. Sixty thousand. No. Arizona, Tucson, Scottsdale. Uh, yeah, that area. You're broke. Paycheck to paycheck. $60,000 of Tucson Scottsdale, but the cost of living is about 130% of the national average. $60,000 is every bit of $45,000 in Houston or Dallas. It's paycheck to paycheck. It's paycheck to paycheck. No savings. Now, unless you get some sort of inheritance or whatever, 
It's not, it's not living money, man. Mm -hmm. How much money do you think you'd need to survive between 65 and 85? That's almost $2 million cash. Mm -hmm. You can't save that. You have to invest your way to that. Yeah. And women feel secure because no one's trying to boop them in the head and take their sandwiches. So my point is this, relationships, especially, I'm pushing harder because you said you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't understand how this lines up with us as Christians. You're supposed to be mm -hmm. in a relationship. That's a woman's purpose on the planet. Is it not? In our faith tradition, yes. what is her? What is your purpose? To get the bag. Go get the bag, girl. Oh yeah, go get that money. <laughs> think money? You think money is going to buy you happiness? <laughs> You've been lied to. Honestly, to. I mean, yes, there is to be in the relationship, but like. Uh huh. I also believe that, like, in a relationship that she's probably left over and over and over again. And it's not just her, because I'm not picking on this girl. She looks like a sweet lady. It's just, it's a trend. Okay. When trends show themselves, back when I was in the military, we would say, oh, there's a trend, something that continuously happens over and over and over again. What is that trend? People not taking relationships seriously. They leave. They just, oh, I'll replace you with someone else. Oh, you're the child's father? Oh, I'll replace you with a, with a stepdad. Meanwhile, the dad's crying himself to sleep, drinking alcohol. Can't figure out what he, what he did wrong. Is God picking on him? Stuff like that. You, you're, you're putting people through torture. If you don't want to, if you don't want to pay the vows, do not make the vows in the first place. So, continue. Like serving and loving God, I feel like. And this is this is why, if you leave the relationship, no man should have to owe you anything, because you decided to leave from underneath the umbrella and the protection of your husband. He had the severance package there for you. He was going to leave it all to you when he died anyway because you you were probably going to outlive him. But you know what? You left contract null and void. He doesn't owe you anything. That's why alimony doesn't should never apply. That's why child support should never apply. I'm sorry. Call people delinquents all you want. But guess what? If the husband said, I take my vow seriously, I'm staying. And if you want to leave, you go right ahead. No judge should ever make that man pay a dime to you because you didn't take the relationship seriously. You left on your own two feet. Continue. Uh -huh. You kind of have given me, like you kind of just blanketed me because of the things that I've shared in regard to I blanketed being you single because and stuff like that. Christian woman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and whose headship are you under? I am an I I do go to church. I do whose serve. I help headship? out. Headship. Headship. Are you talking about like relationship or like headship. at my church? If if you were raised in a in a in Christian tradition, you're supposed to go from your father's house to your husband's mm -hmm. house. In the interim, it's acceptable. I still submit to my godparents. I still submit to my, to my... Hold on. In the interim, under your pastor's headship. Yeah. But you're out here on your own, making up your own Christian rules. This is modern Christian feminism because I have a heart for Jesus. That's why I'm going to break apart the see I was prayer because so many women believe I got a relationship with God by myself. But yeah, but where's the man? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the Trinity. There's headship. Mm -hmm. 
Vertical relationship. Who's leading you? Who are you? Who's who are you? Who are you submitting to? Who's guiding you? Oh, come on, YouTube. You're killing me here with these ads. It's not even at the beginning. It's like in the middle of it. There, I do. I have pastor, and then I have my godparents, and then I have my so adopted you're pastor. Parents. Your pastor is male or female? Uh, he's male, but he's married, and his wife is female. How often do you? How often do you meet with your pastor? Like to have a sit down conversation, or just kind of like a. You said you. I, I'm like asking you. I'm asking. Attendant. I'm asking you. You said I'm asking how you meet your pastor. Well, like to meet and like talk to them about things. I hardly ever. Mm -hmm. So you said you're under the leadership. Of That's not your fault, darling. That's unfortunately the female leadership as well, because unfortunately the pastor might likely be blue pilled himself. He may not have the proper biblical leadership himself, unfortunately. And like I said, when you have that, that card dangling over across your face, oh, you're not getting any love tonight if you do X, Y, and Z. Guess what? The, the, the pastor, his hands are tied, and he can't preach on certain subjects. He can't hold certain singles retreats and male support groups. You know why? Because that would offset things. That would mess up the agenda. You understand? We're fighting a spiritual battle here, fellas. All right? That's why stop with the pornography. Stop with the OnlyFans. Stop with the strip clubs. Get a real woman to hold and kiss you, to hold you tight. You'll be much, much happier that way, guys. But the problem is men, men are complacent. They're okay with being overweight. They're okay with not having jobs. They're okay with mediocrity. All right? And I understand, hey, ladies, your hypergamy is showing. All right? The guy who's driving a forklift at Sam's Club making 41000 a year is probably going to be the man for you. Not six foot six, five hundred k a year. Athlete. All right? It's going to be the regular Joe. I understand, hey... He's got to be a bit more ambitious. So, dude, hey, take it up a notch. But let's be realistic here as men and women, all right? Let's accept each other for who we are, and let's do better. But anyways, I don't really have much more time, guys. This was a long video. And if you guys watched it to the very end, well done. Well done. I hope you guys were well entertained and informed. I usually have some really good content on my channel so please make sure you guys leave some really good feedback, all right? This man must be preserved. This man's work must be preserved. And um, what he did for the community was priceless, priceless. He was called names. He was, I'm, I'm sorry, he was, mis he was abused and misused in his community. And unfortunately, his wisdom was ignored, and in the white culture, we could definitely learn from people like this. Because, yeah, you think we've got problems? Oh, yeah, we've got some big problems, especially with respect. There is zero respect, all right? Like, our men, like the men in, in this culture are just treated like trash. I'm sorry. We got to work on this, guys, but that's all I really have. If you guys have any feedback for me, please leave it down in the comments below. Kevin Samuels, you are a, you are a good man. We miss you, and uh, yeah, we'll try to carry on the legacy you left. And um, All right, guys, um, yeah, let me know if you need to speak with me for any reason. All right, leave your socials, leave a comment. Let's talk. What are your thoughts? Do you agree with any of this? Is this... Is this making sense to anybody out there? All right, you guys have a great day. I am BP signing out.